Greetings everyone, welcome to a new thing I've decided to do, even though I said I wasn't going to do it right away. I'm going to do it right away anyway, because, I don't know, I feel really encouraged and motivated enough to go through with this. So, hopefully this will be fun for you guys to watch. Uh, so I'm going to be LPing Chips Challenge Level Pack 4. Now, I'm well aware that there are two other people currently doing this. Uh, however, I'm, I have decided to do it mainly to for a couple of reasons. One, and probably the biggest reason, is because I really want to kind of go into more detail and in more depth to how the set was constructed, since I was a pretty important part of the staff team for this set's construction. Uh, I know a lot of back history, or not back, back history, um, you know, I know a lot of history and the debates and whatnot, all the compelling arguments we've made for several different levels for that we have considered for this set. And there's just a lot of a lot of things to talk about with this set. Like a lot of things changed. And I'm really looking forward to sharing the, all this tidbit and information with all all you guys. Um that's the biggest reason why I'm doing this. I, I'm just so eager to talk about this because I've never been part of a CCLP staff before, and I've, I, I've, I've been really excited to do this ever since we started the set, or started making the set back in May. So this is going to be a ton of fun. And the other reason I want to do this is because I have the most levels in this set. Um, I'm not trying to have a super strong ego about that. I'm not trying to be, oh, I'm a better designer than all you, haha. Ha. No, that's I'm not trying to come across that. Uh, but I, the levels I do have in this set, a good chunk of them, I have a pretty good knowledge of how I came about to design those 37 levels, and I really want to. I, I really want to share like my design stories behind all those levels, if there are any. There are quite a few, um, but all the levels I made for the set are still fresh enough in my memory to remember how I how I crafted them and whatnot. And the levels that are in the set that I didn't even expect to be in the set, uh, I can talk about as well. And other, of course, all the other levels by the other 20 designers uh, that I can share my personal opinions on and whatnot just there's just a lot of things I want to talk about with this set so this this whole LP is mostly going to be a lot of talking I hope you guys don't mind that because uh, like I said there's two other LPs of this going on both of which are blind and they're obviously more focused on the gameplay than anything else so this is more, more or less just for extra information like that you don't need to know but I'm gonna tell it anyway because I can't keep it to myself uh, so I'm a terrible staff member for that but I don't care I, I had a lot of fun making this set it was probably one of the best moments in this community that I've ever had I'm gonna cherish forever forever even when I do leave this community one day um, I'm always I'm gonna cherish the time I was on this staff for the rest of my life uh, I can't even get any more emotional than that. So that all being said, that was a four minute intro, so let's get started. So first things first, uh, there is currently no story for this set, and mostly because the storyline that we had planned for this set kind of fell through. Uh, it was really involved, it, it was a really good storyline, but it was just a little too complex and involved with itself, and it just kind of overwhelmed itself in a kind of a kind of in a, in a ironic way if that makes any sense the storyline was just way too powerful and got to the point where it was just really hadn't had more to do with the concept of where the storyline was going than the game itself which is kind of not what a lot of us wanted so we decided to scrap that storyline and start with a different one um, that storyline to this day has as far as I know, has not been started on, and this set's already been out for a month, so 
I'm, I'm personally not really eager for a storyline personally I'm not really as persistent towards one since the set's been out for a month now everyone's pretty much played a good chunk of these levels I don't think anyone's going to replay it for the story uh, some people will I know I think I will too but uh, who knows so all that being said there's currently no storyline so it's just the, the levels themselves so that's always great because I wouldn't LP with the storyline anyway that's for JB to do whenever it's done he kind of already said that in, in on Skype so no shame in saying that so this first level is Molly cool and before we start this it's worth mentioning that we had a quite the selection of level one choices for this set we had at least five or six different levels that we were choosing from to be level one uh, choosing level one was one of the hardest things we did we uh, went through as a staff because it was one of those things even during uh, testing and voting and everything we were just kind of kind of imagining like what would we like to see be level one and almost all of us had a different level ideal level one uh, we ultimately settled with Molly cool because mainly because it didn't take up the whole map and it it kind of flows into as a, as a it, it's kind of a better level one choice than all the other ones which most of the other ones did get into the set which we'll get to pretty soon but for now I'm gonna start playing I'm gonna start by killing myself because I've been talking for almost seven minutes yeah I did I say this was gonna be mostly talking I'm gonna lower my volume just a little bit so as you can see I am using my already solved DAC file for this set I didn't want to start fresh with a untapped save file I guess mainly because there's really no reason to do that so hope that doesn't bother anyone so that was Molecule by Jeffrey who was also on the staff um, he has quite a few levels in, in the first decade of the set um, I think four of them are by him if I'm not if I remember right uh, he's kind of heavy on the start in my in my personal opinion but all the levels that he does have in this first part of the set they're they're they do the job well so uh, molecule was chosen as level one mostly because it involved just key key collection and conservation boot collecting and thieves and it, it just it, it included the right amount for a level one we didn't we basically didn't want to have another entrance examination that was our biggest uh, concern but I, I'm pretty sure we avoided that so level two pixelated fire this was also a level one choice and I want to say this was my ideal level one um, mainly because it just the way the level flows like um, it the level essentially solves itself and that's kind of what I wanted for a level one um, but being level two is pr probably for the better I think but still a pretty fun level altogether oh guy okay, pushed that block okay clear that get this so yeah this was my level one choice um, I'm happy it did manage to get into the set and I got my same score again that's pretty cool um, yeah a really fun level by Eddie which was look at this on CC zone uh, unsure what ever happened to him I see him on CC zone every once in a while but he's not nearly as active as he was at first which is Quite, a, quite unfortunate. The levels he has in the set are really good. So I, I do hope he designs more stuff, especially for CC2 sometime. Uh, but for now, he's... Wherever he is, we can't really look at him because he's not around. Um, yeah. 
So fossilized snow is level three. Um, another thing worth mentioning is a lot of these first few levels, they weren't necessarily the highest rated ones. Um, Molecule, I want to say, wasn't top 149. I want to say this level also wasn't either, but I don't remember the voting results offhand. I don't have them right in front of me or anything. So, uh, if a fellow staff member is watching and they have the voting results open, uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, I don't have them open at, at this time. I don't even know if I have the page bookmarked. And nice, got an improvement that I wasn't even trying to get. So that was another level by Jeffrey. Uh, really fun level. It really showcased the uh, quote-unquote triple maze with the ice and the toggle walls and then the uh, thin wall maze at the end. Good stuff. So Oasis. Uh, this was another level that didn't do terribly well. Um, one thing we did at, on the staff was we wanted to limit our uh, our level rankings. Basically, we didn't want to pick a level in like the bottom 500 or whatever. Um, I think our range was the top 400. And I think only one of them was just barely past that margin, but that's very later in the set. Um, worth mentioning that the sockets that were in these three tiles were not originally there. Uh, they were included, I want to say the last week before the set was released, because there was a possible MS only cook that could be created using slide delay with the blocks uh, above. So these sockets were added. Uh, to prevent the fireballs from g essentially creating a loop in this right section to uh, not be able to get the yellow key and survive. Uh, believe it or not, the sockets <laughs> were debated. Uh, there was dirt and gravel to be chosen as well, but sockets were chosen just because it's uh, sockets being used for aesthetics are pretty awesome. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was Oasis with a pretty awesome ending. Another good level by Jeffrey. So that was Oasis. Now on to non-dimensional layer. Layer or layer? I don't even know. So for those that are watching uh, Jeffrey's somewhat ongoing optimized ZK5 thing he's doing, uh, he did mention in whatever video it was that uh, most staff members, uh, after voting ended, we each compiled our personal 149 uh, picks just based off voting results alone. Um, I want to say me and four others did that. So not every staff member did it but enough of us did it to where we can kind of create a pretty decent guideline to, to follow. Uh, I want to say this level, and I maybe Molecule to an extent, uh, were on all five of the lists. And if that was the case, the level was basically guaranteed to be in the set if all five of us uh, picked it. And nice, another improvement. Uh, yeah, so non-dimensional layer was a pretty obvious choice for the set. If it did worse than what it was, I don't remember its ranking offhand. It was somewhere in the 200s, I want to say. Uh, but it did very well, and it, it was just pretty much perfect for the for the set as a toggle maze, because uh, there's not a whole lot of toggle wall mazes or levels in general that we had to choose from. and there's two in this set that somehow made it in. The second one is more or more or less kind of the worst one, but that's just my opinion. Uh, but we'll get to that level as we move on.
So on to Proving Grounds. So this was another level 1 candidate that we had, and probably the strongest one we had to consider because this was actually the easiest rated level of all voting. In Langman's terms, this level had the lowest difficulty. I think it was the final result of it was 1.3 in difficulty. I want to say. I don't remember for certain. And this was in the top 149. This did very well in voting. Uh, despite being super easy. I think a lot of people wanted this to be level 1 just based on the voting results alone. But I want to say the, the main reason we didn't go with it for level 1, despite being the easiest rated level, uh, was mainly because it takes up the whole map. And quite a few staff members, I can't really say myself included because I really didn't feel this way, but a lot of the staff members really didn't want a f the first level to take up the entire map. Um, I kind of get that idea, that perspective. I still believe this would have been a better level one choice, but um, for what it's worth, uh, it's still I'm still happy gotten the set. Um, it some might argue it's it's more it's better for a nuts and bolts type candidate. And I think that's what the debate of that was. This was more of a nuts and nuts and bolts style level than anything else. But I don't remember offhand. So, yeah, that's proving grounds. With another improvement, I'm getting a lot of those. Uh, I guess it's worth mentioning that I'm not really trying to get these improvements. I'm just casually playing these again, and I'm just happy to get improvements. So I'm not trying to optimize any of these levels. I think I said this already in another video, but I'm kind of over optimization. Uh, I think I burnt myself out on it. Unfortunately, it got to the point where it was just it really stressing me out and depressing me just because I couldn't meet up to someone else's level, which I wasn't trying to do, but I was trying to improve my own skills, and I, I just don't have that in me compared to a lot of people, and I don't have the patience to really improve those skills, so I just kind of laid back and just stopped. So if I get improvements, I get improvements. I'm not at all trying to do that. And of course, once this LP is done, I'll report all these. Unless someone like James wants to keep track of them throughout this thing, but I don't think he's even going to be watching this. Alright, so, in the pool. So, speaking of the sets that each one of us have made, uh, this was one of the levels only I picked at first. And I'm really happy that I was somehow able to convince the other staff members to let this level get into voting, or not voting, uh, the set. I think what it does, it it does it very well. Uh, having to make the nail and uh, to, like the whole nail gimmick is, is pretty well executed in this type of uh, scenario because there's a lot of levels in this set that require the know the acknowledgement of what a nail is, how to make one, and what not to collect to not get stuck in one. Uh, there's a lot of those in this set, so I figured uh, we should have a level that introduces the nail, or kind of reintroduces the nail in a pretty simple way at the very start of the set, just so people, like a refresher of some sorts. So uh, that was my reason to, to include it. I'm really happy got in the set. I think it's a perfect fit, in my own opinion. I know it's not going to be the same as others, so hopefully you can understand where my opinion comes from. That's all I can say. That was by Rock Jinaru, who I really hope LP, or not L, not necessarily LPs, but I hope plays this set at least. 
I know very well he would enjoy this. So let me take some soda drink real quick. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. We've got 20 minutes in, we're only on level 8. I'm talking way too much, but I think that's a good thing. I, I'm not one to talk a lot, so... So the fourth dimension. This is one of my levels, my first level in CCLP4, and I have to say, um, I'm really happy this got into this set. I'm not particularly pr super proud of this design as I was when I first made it. Um, it's this concept I was trying to work with for a really, really long time. Like, I don't know how or why, but this this concept with the how like this whole concept took me well over a year to quote unquote perfect. And I wouldn't necessarily call this perfection. I think I could have done this a little better in some ways, but once I got it to work. I was just say I just thought okay well it works and I'll take it. <laughs> so basically once all the chips are collected and you hit the tank button uh, it forms another maze to collect the red keys. And really awesome concept. I'm proud of myself for pulling it off decently. Again I I think I feel like I could have done it better, but um, some I'll leave that to, up to someone else to try to do. And I de I feel like I definitely could have spread these red keys out a little bit more, but at the same time, I, I don't really know what else to say since I am the the designer of this. I'm, I might have designer bias or whatever, or I might be just criticizing my own self. So, who knows. But, originally this level didn't have all these chips. They were all originally dirt tiles, and the red keys were originally chips. However, I quickly realized that that could create some pretty odd optimal solutions to, by not removing certain dirt tiles initially, and then clearing them later without the tank being moved. I didn't really like that, and I knew that would kind of quote unquote ruin the level for Lynx players so I quickly changed those all the chips that way they all had to be collected and the second the maze the tanks form when you press the tank button gets formed with no questions asked so that's really all I have to say about this level other than the title was from the level title bank from someone else I don't remember who provided it I saw it I took it uh, the level was made before I took the title, so it has nothing to do with the level. I know what the fourth dimension is, and of course it has nothing to do with it. And that's all I have to say about that level. Alright, so pinball. If you missed any chips on the way up the plunger lane, you can return there the same way a real pinball would. So this level is... Um, and no offense to the designer, quite the oddball of this whole decade, I feel. Um, really well designed and a lot of fun to play at that, but I want to say, like in the pool, how I was, I was the only one who had it on my initial list. Um, I want to say only one person had this level on their list. I don't remember who that person was though. Might have been JB, but I'm I'm not for certain. Um, but it was convinced enough to let this level get in the set, um, mainly as a simple dodging challenge. And yeah, got the same score again. Uh, very fun level. Otherwise, um, pulls off the pinball machine reference pretty well I feel and I don't really have a super strong opinion about this level it's one of the, it's just one of those levels where I just enjoy um, 
I don't like it or nor dislike it. It's I enjoy it, and I feel like that's more than enough to say about this level. Uh, very fun to play, very nicely designed, and all that good stuff. Though I will say it's kind of cool for a level like the fourth dimension that had blue walls as its outer aesthetic choice and then this level kind of also has that the blue walls going on for it in the corners like right here and everywhere else it had them I think that's pretty cool but I don't think that was intentional in, in the level ordering alright so stuck in emerald this is another level I made and I'll be honest I'm not particularly fond of this level much anymore if at all uh, it's one of those levels I made and shortly after making it it just my liking of it just kind of took a toll and I honestly really didn't want this in the set but every other staff member liked it so much they wanted it to be in the set um, or at least nearly every other staff member um, I was the only one that was kind of on the fence about it and eventually I was like you know what if you guys like it this much uh, or, or feel like it's a good fit for the set, then what the hell, we'll include it. Uh, because I feel like there's a, a lot of green level references in this set. Though I will say I like that initial start with the na the green lock nail. It's probably my only part of the level I like. Um, those red, those suction boots in the middle are red herring. Uh, so yeah, and then once you get down here, the toggle walls start flipping. Um, and then there's the mechanism right there. So one thing a lot of people seem to be missed to miss with this level is there's a hint right here that if you can get get the teeth to kind of get stuck, you can read it. If you're successfully reading this, then you successfully escape the emerald and you're probably about to run out of time. Not necessarily a hint that needed to stay in in this set, but I feel like it was one of those things where you know, once you get once you get out of it and if you get out of out of the thing in time, one would naturally just explore the outside of the level, try to find the way uh find the exit and whatnot and I assumed someone would find the hint before the exit. But apparently that's not the case. That that hasn't been the case. I've never seen anyone go to the left side of the level first upon solving this level. So, but I could be wrong. That's just that's just uh, based off what I've seen in in LPs and such. So, uh, yeah, uh, not one of my favorites of mine in the set. But I guess in terms of an official set, it, it does what it does really well. So I can't argue with it. So, keyboard malfunction. I'm actually going to lower my volume for this one because I've tried talking over this level before and it didn't sound too good. It actually gave me a headache, so... Keyboard malfunction. This level is pretty interesting. It's another level of mine and it's one of those levels that just has one of those simplistic design features with just sockets, yellow keys and locks, and one single chip. And the whole idea with this level is to trade one key for for more. And that's what this entire level is about. Um, there's probably uh, many different solu solutions to this. I haven't really explored every single option in terms of solutions but I'm pretty proud of this level um, my biggest regret with this is probably having it take up the whole map but that's such a really small regret I feel like a level like this needs to take up the map to to work because this isn't really a level that could really work with a uh, in a, well, how do I want to word it? I don't think this concept would work if it was smaller or in like a smaller scaled version of this. I don't think the concept would be the same. It wouldn't be as enjoyable. But this did 
very well in voting. I was actually really surprised with how well it did. Because I, I want to say I gave this a 4, if I remember right. But I don't remember my ratings. Uh, they're, uh, I don't remember where the, my, what my votes are for all, almost all these levels. Um, but yeah, the sockets everywhere just to form walls. Uh, if it's not evident enough, I really love using sockets as aesthetics. Because once you do, you can just blast through everything. And as a kid, I really enjoyed doing this. And this, that, that was especially the case with a uh, short circuit. And you can collect even more yellow keys if you want. But you don't want to get them because you actually have to get rid of your yellow, any extra yellow keys you did get so you can exit. So yeah, you can just have fun blasting through everything if you so wish to do so. And I, I like providing that opportunity to players, especially the, the newer ones, because it's, it's an experience and... Uh, not really an experience, but it's a, it's a thing I enjoyed myself as a kid, and I would like newer players or whatever to enjoy a similar experience like that, if that makes sense. Uh, it's a level I designed fairly recently. Uh, it's one it's one of the first Josh L6 levels I designed. Um, a much easier version of the Cinedark Isle concept which is the same thing but just that level was more complex so um, really happy with it I know JB really likes this level um, looking forward to his comments on this level whenever he gets to it in his LP of the set I know he really likes it I, I think I've heard him talk about it several times through Skype but I don't get tired of hearing my levels get liked it's it's a really nice thing to hear. Like it, you have no idea. So rivets. I think we'll play this level and then we'll call it a day. So this level was another level one choice. And yeah, believe it or not, we there's another one. At least another one after this. Um. Okay, I don't go there yet. I go this way. This was another level one choice. Um, there was, I th want to say, there was a, a time where we actually kind of argued uh, to include both uh, rivets or this level rivets and proving grounds. Like we were unsure if we wanted to include both of them, and both of them did very well in voting. I mean, I think there were 20 places apart, but they were both in the top 149. Um, so it was really hard to make the make the the decision to whether or not we wanted to include both the levels in the set. We all, of course, we ultimately included both of them, uh, but we felt like they had to be spaced out. Otherwise, it would just be a little too similar natured. Um, this being level one, though was v really unlikely to happen, but just because it's a little bit more advanced than Proving Grounds and Molecule, so it was quickly not really deemed a, as a good level 1 choice. Uh, other than that, it's a really fun level to play. It's one of those levels I don't get tired of, and I'm really happy got into the set. So that was Rivets by Joshua Bone. And appropriately, appropriately enough, I want to say he also had level 12 in CCLP3 which is interesting. So I think we're going to stop there. I don't want to make this a super long video. I know only 12 levels were played in f like 30 minutes or so, considering the intro and whatnot. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun talking about all these little history bits and whatnot. They're re it's really fun to talk about, and hopefully it's just as fun to listen and kind of get to know how things went down in, with, in, during the staff. Um, there's going to be a lot more stories as we get to the later levels because honestly these first few levels there's not really a whole lot to talk about in terms of uh, placement and whatnot 
or like arg arguments for being in the set other, other than the level one choices because like I said there is another level that we did consider for level one that's a little bit later uh, not too much later it's in this decade but uh, until then I thank you guys so much for watching I know I don't say that as JB does but I really do hope you guys enjoy this LP I hope you guys in will kind of get to know how things went down on the staff and I can't wait to share more tidbits of information for you guys um, I feel like I, I would probably be the best to do that if not Jeffrey or JB but um, I'm willing to do it of course so I hope you guys will enjoy so thanks for watching again and see you guys later